I'm making a bunch of noise. All righty, I guess we can get started. Uh, it looks like it's just me in the tech room on uh, on Zoom. I see Judy's coming back in. And I see on Facebook, at least all I can tell is we have uh, Bill Russell and uh, Glenda Hendricks are both watching. And so we're glad that you're here. And I just have to trust that some other people will tune in uh, at, a, at a later um, moment. Maggie uh, is trying to get on. Maggie, what, Judy? Maggie is trying to join us on Zoom. Who is? Maggie Keller. Uh, I, I don't see it on here. Okay. Uh, we got some other folks that have come up on, on Facebook, which is cool but I don't see anybody else. Okay. Ah, uh, somebody with an iPhone trying to connect. Uh, maybe that's Miss Maggie. Well, I see Jeanette James is here and Charles Women's is here. And then there's Heather Orman, John Nichols with his broken arm. Uh, good to see all y'all, glad you're here. Um, we will go ahead and get started. I'm really glad that everybody uh, is here. Uh, if you are like me, you are getting tired of Zooms and live Facebook screens and, and all of that kind of stuff. But wow, I'm so glad we have that because if we didn't, we'd be um, less connected uh, than we're able to be right now. So two weeks ago, uh, we had our last uh, session called I Will. That was the sixth lesson. And then last week, I took some vacation time, and I'm grateful for Doug Shields Jr. for filling in for me. He had a really good class. Uh, I enjoyed um, watching his presentation. I see Eric and Melanie are with us now. I'm glad to see them. And Miss June Holt is with us. So good. Oh, and there's Ernie. All of a sudden, his face popped up on my screen. Good to see you, Ernie. <laughs> All right. Well, at any rate, two weeks ago, uh, when we last had our, our class, uh, on this topic of I will, uh, we began the idea of looking at or, or the topic of, uh, hey, Kathy, uh, I will serve others. And, and serving others is a, a core principle of New Testament Christianity. And I don't know if you perceive this problem or not, uh, but this is something that, that I have seen, uh, not, just, um, not just at the Oxford Church of Christ, but but kind of in Christianity as a whole. Um, but this is what I see. And, and our quest, and we all have it, it's just endemic to who we are and what we are. It's a part of our humanity. But in our quest to be served, uh, we often forget that we have a mandate uh, to serve others. And the easiest place, uh, some of you will probably understand what I'm saying. I hope you will. But the easiest <coughs> mixed up and <laughs> whack, uh, is in church buildings all across America, all across our world. Uh, we come, especially in our culture, we come to, to worship services, we come to the church building uh, with kind of a, a consumer mindset. We make a contribution, we give our money, and, and we often expect kind of, of a return on our investment. And that return is more often than not uh, having our own needs met. It's just a part of, of who we are. Everybody uh, likes to have our needs met. Sometimes when we deal with, with um, marriages that are going south, uh, somebody will say, well, he just doesn't meet my needs or she just doesn't uh, meet my needs. 
<laughs> and that kind of thinking is, like I said, endemic. And 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 we all want to have <laughs> our needs met. Hey, Sandra, good to see you tonight. Uh, so what would happen, Judy or Ernie or anybody else that, that that's watching on Facebook? You can certainly put a comment in, and I'll respond it because I've got it laid open uh, on my phone, and I'm watching that as well as I'm um, using uh, Zoom on my on my computer. But what would happen if we changed our thinking and if we gave money to be a blessing to others or, or if we came and participated in, in, in worship, uh, not just to be uh, entertained or encouraged, but what if our whole rationale for, for coming and being together was to be an encouragement to others, what if we came to give instead of coming to give? I suspect uh, we would have a healthier relationship or understanding of some very in, in, important, uh, important verses. And and I just have to acknowledge this from John Nichols. He says that Ernie keeps showing up on the video and that we're flashing back and forth from from me to Ernie. Uh, Ernie, I, I don't know which one of us is the beautiful one, which one of us is the ugly one, but I'm not sure either one of us would be qualified as beautiful. Uh, sorry, guys, if, if you're getting abused by, by me and Ernie's face here. Um, but I want you to think about some bills up there laughing in the, in the sound room. I, I want you to think about a, a number of verses real quick. Hebrews chapter 6 in verse 10 says, For God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you demonstrated for his name by attending worship services um, three times a month and on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights four times a month. Y'all seen that verse before? You ever heard that verse before, Judy? <laughs> the verse says, for God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you demonstrated for his name by serving the saints and by continuing to serve them. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, another verse that, that, that's really important to me at least. Uh, Paul says, for you were called to be free, brothers and sisters, only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. In other words, don't use your freedom that you have been given in Christ to satisfy yourself, he says, don't use that as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. So we were called to be free, and that freedom is actually for serving. Matthew chapter 23, in verses 11 through 12, Jesus said, The greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Romans 12, verse 13, back to Paul. He says, share with the saints in their needs, pursue hospitality. Now, in this last verse, I think it addresses something that we probably ought to consider a little more often. Hey, I see Maggie Keller did make it on the Zoom. Good to see you. At least I see your name on there, and I'm not sure who the John is on Zoom. Maybe that's John Supple. I'm not sure. Uh, but I want us to think for just a minute about hospitality. In our um, American frame of reference, and I see my mom's on, on Facebook. Hi, mom. Uh, in our American frame of, of reference, hospitality is about having family and friends in our homes to share a meal, et cetera. I kind of worry uh, that we don't do enough of that. And of course, COVID-19 uh, isn't helping us at all in that respect, but it gets a little bit worse or a little bit deeper. In the Bible, hospitality is not about your best friend or your great aunt Sally or, or having your neighbor over. Hospitality is all about strangers. Hospitality is not about entertaining people who can turn around and reciprocate and have you in their home. It's about dealing with those who are strangers, those who don't have. And so outside of COVID, uh, when's the last time 
uh, you were able to have somebody in your home for a meal that you knew well. Or better yet, when is the last time you extended hospitality uh, to someone whom you have very little, if any, connection to? And so from that perspective and more, what does it mean to say, I will serve others? What does it mean to say, I will serve others? Tom Rainer, in his book, I Will, describes Jesus' service like this. He says, instead of coming to earth as a political king, Jesus came to serve. Indeed, his service would go all the way to the cross. He became sin. He took on our sin. He was crucified on that bloody cross of his own volition. He served you and me by dying for us. And that gives me a pause, um, gives me the opportunity uh, to remind you about the new banners that came up on our stage on the first Sunday of this year. On one side, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Uh, we're told to love God and to love others. And then on the other side, uh, we're told to pick up our cross and, and follow Jesus, to deny ourselves. And in that self-denial, we are serving. So what I'd like to do is take a break right here. I'd like for us to pause and, and have a prayer together. And then we'll look at some uh, of the... Uh, some of the examples that, that we get out of the life of, of Paul and, and what he had to say. A number of folks are, are hurting and sick. Uh, we had just found out today that um, two of our children have been uh, exposed and uh, one's already waiting on a test. One um, is self-quarantining because he can't get the test yet too early. Uh, I know that um, Miss Tommy uh, Waters is is really struggling. We we need to remember uh, her family. Uh, just we need to remember our world in, in this time of of COVID. So if you will, uh, let's take a few moments and go to God in prayer. Lord God, we're grateful for all our blessings. Uh, as much as uh, technology uh, tends to to take over our lives at times, I'm grateful that that we have. Uh, the technology that's in front of us so that we can uh, still find ways to be better connected so that we can still uh, study together. We can still interact uh, in, in, in pleasure with studying your word as a family, as friends, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, it does give us pleasure to be able to, to be family and be together in the study. And we thank you for that. Lord, we ask that you be with all of those who are hurting particularly uh, those who are suffering with, with COVID. We ask that you be with uh, Tommy Waters and her husband and daughter and family uh, as they enter a very difficult time. We ask that you um, give them comfort and give them peace and that you will um, ease uh, their burden as they go through this time. Lord, we ask that you be with our elders Every one of them is just a man. And Lord, they're prone to the same heartaches. They're prone to the same struggles. They're prone to the same mistakes as, as any of the rest of us. And yet they carry uh, such a heavy, heavy burden. And Lord, we ask that you uh, give them rest. We ask that you give them strength. We ask that you bear them up under their burdens. And Lord, uh, we especially ask that, that you help all of us to to be an encouragement to them and to not be a burden or difficult. I'm thankful, Lord, for all those who are watching in whatever format they're using. I thank you for all the folks who are members of this church, and I ask that you bless us as we move forward uh, in a new year uh, to be your people, uh, to spread uh, your message, to be conduits of hope and praise and mercy and peace and grace. Forgive us and bless us, Lord, for it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. So, if you will, grab a Bible. I hope you'll co you have something close by, whether it's electronic or, or pay, printed page. But turn with me uh, to Philippians chapter 2. Boy, that was an awkward way to say that, but I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. 
Philippians chapter 2, I'd like for you to uh, read with me uh, verses 1 through 18. Oh, 1 through 18, one of my favorite passages of Scripture, uh, something that's very, very uh, challenging to me. And at any rate, we will share it together. I hope you're having a good day today. Um, I've grinned an awful lot today, and I'm grinning right now. Uh, it's been a good day, and I hope yours has been good too. So let's read Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. If there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he, he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity, and when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming a thief to the point of death, excuse me, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Verse 12, therefore, me, therefore, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation, among whom you shine like stars in the world. By holding firm to the word of life, then I can boast in the day of Christ that I didn't run or labor for nothing. But even if I am poured out as a drink offering on the sacrificial service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. In the same way, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. John Nichols, I know you're still on there. Uh, I finally saw what you said was happening. I've been watching uh, the pictures uh, of different things up there flash. So I'm going to try to change that and see if I can't fix it right here and just put the speaker up there, except I'm the speaker and not Maggie Keller. So that's not really working. I don't know how that's happening like that. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Now I don't see anybody. That is really, really funny. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Well, we'll back, back at it. In Philippians chapter 2, as we just read... In verses 2 through 4, Paul tells us that we are to value others above ourselves. And, and that can be a little bit difficult at times, but that's what Paul says we need to do. We value others above ourselves. And then in verses 5 through 11, Paul tells us that our rationale for joy, our rationale for service is Jesus. And then in chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, he tells us to work out our own salvation, to let the Spirit of Christ be alive and active in our love and ministry in the church. Now, I need to tell you that for the vast majority of my, of my Bible study life, I have always looked at that passage about working out 
uh, your own salvation with fear and trembling. I have, for the most of my uh, biblical life, if you will, my, my, my preaching life, I have almost always saw or always um, understood that verse to be about the individual. But I need you to understand when Paul says, work out your salvation, I'm beginning to believe and understand and see that this is not a singular you, but in good old Southern English, this is a y'all. This is the church in action together showing we belong to Christ. We serve others as God works among us. So I want you to hear this. Working out our salvation is a together endeavor. It's what we do together. Now, it's interesting in this passage, uh, Paul tells us some things that are the opposite of working out our salvation. In verses 14 through 16, he clearly says that when we are arguing or complaining or failing to shine and hold out the word uh, of life, uh, well, we're doing the opposite of working out our salvation with fear and trembling. So as I process this and I begin to, to think about what it means to serve, I have to ask this question. Uh, why aren't we serving? If, if we're not really spending a lot of time serving people, uh, why is it that we're not? Why is it that we're not? Sometimes uh, we may feel useless or, or unable, but we're really not unable or useless when it comes to serving. Sometimes we are, are hurting from loss or, or life struggles, whatever those might be, but I need you to understand our pain is often the perfect place to start serving. Sometimes uh, we are licking our wounds because of criticism and, and unkindness, and, and, and sometimes we pull back. Uh, but when I read what Paul has to say and I think about working out our salvation, I realize we just simply can't use that as an excuse. We have to get back in the game. Sometimes, unfortunately, we are uh, a little bit um, unmotivated, and we need to remember that we have to use our talents uh, before we lose them. A long, long time ago, um, I took uh, several years of, of German uh, in high school. Um, I uh, was pretty proud of some of the things I could say and, and do. Um, I can tell you that I'm hot. I can tell you, um, I ask you if you have any chewing gum. I can say, thank God it's Friday. Uh, I can call you a pig. Uh, but that's about all I remember of, of the German language. And, and, and the re reality is that had I kept studying it and kept using it, I would have retained more of them. And so we need to use our gifts. And, and we need to remember that using our gifts is contagious and, and we can spread uh, the value and the idea and the, and the love of service by serving ourselves. And that brings me to 1 Peter uh, chapter 4 and verse 10. Peter says, just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. I love that phrase, the varied grace of God. You see, it happens to be that I'm gifted in areas that you are not. And you are gifted in areas that I am not. And it doesn't matter when we use our gifts of grace, when I use what I've been given, when you use what you've been given, we will find that our gifts and our abilities complement each other and when we're all serving together we are working out our salvation the church has been commissioned by jesus to go and make disciples and the only way that any of us can accomplish that task beyond the walls of our church building is by being engaged involved and 
active as disciples inside the walls so that together we can move outside the walls. It's all about service. So I've got this long list of, of, of ways that you can serve, practical ideas for service. I'm going to read through them. I want you to know that either later on tonight or first thing in the morning, I'm going to post these to our Facebook pages as well as send them out uh, via email for you to, to peruse and to consider. At any rate, these are practical ideas for service. First idea is serve through groups. A few people get together and adopt a struggling family or, or focus on a ministry or, or meet a need in the community and the possibilities are absolutely endless. Another idea, service through self. You know, you don't have to toot your own horn. You just have to roll up your sleeves and pitch in. There is no shortage of opportunities to serve others. Now, I'm going to share a brainstorm list of 25 different ways. Like I said, I'll send this out uh, later on tonight or, or first thing uh, in the morning when I get to the office so that you can have it and, and consider it. Here's 25 different ways that you can serve, that I can serve. Arrive early during a work for a worship service in order to greet guests and show love to members. You do not have to be an assigned greeter to speak to people who come to church. Amen, church? You just don't have to be an assigned greeter. You don't have to wear a name tag. You can just be here to show love to folks. Number two, say hello to someone you've never met before. Now, before you think I'm just talking about church service, I'm talking about anywhere you go. Open your mouth, open your eyes, be a little bit brave, and, and speak to someone you've never met before. Maybe it's the neighbor across the street that you've lived across from for five years and you've never met, and you see them out there taking their trash to the garbage. Go meet them. Say hello. If you're at church and, and you see somebody... Uh, well, we don't really do that, and I'll leave that one alone. We'll, we need to do it, but we'll talk about it. You'll see it on the list. That was number three. Uh, number four, four um, if you see trash around, put it in the garbage. Remember uh, a week or two ago, we talked about somebody. Somebody's always going to do it. Well, sometimes we see things that are, that need, that are dirty or, or trashed up or messed up, and we think, well, somebody's going to take care of that. You be the somebody. I be the somebody. We can do it together. Uh, take the time to thank the people who serve you and, and your children. Again, it doesn't have to be here at the church building, uh, but it can be at a restaurant. Uh, it can be uh, whoever checks you out at the grocery store. Number six, we'll take it back to the church building. Clean up your pew on your way out and, and put it in the trash. Or number seven, and again, this is probably going to have to wait until uh, COVID is, is not quite as prevalent and we're, we're more back to normal, whatever that's going to look like. But sits by someone with small children and help them. Number eight, cook a meal for the youth group or RFC or, or, or anybody that could use a good meal. Buy an arrangement of flowers. Decorate the auditorium at church. Decorate a neighbor's house. Pray. Spend some time praying for the sick, for our leaders, for activities. Oh, here's one that I don't even want to comprehend. I don't even want to consider, but it's a real thing. Volunteer to drive for a youth group trip. Let me just say, as hard and as difficult as it might be, you'll probably get just as much out of it as the teenagers that you transport. Volunteer to assist or, or teach a, a children's class or, or to work in the nursery. Offer to clean the home of someone 
who is ill. Gather up a group of guys or a group of ladies and, 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 and work together for a service project. Organize a winter coat drive. Invite someone to church every week. Uh, meet with others to study through a book and, and spend time praying for one another. I know we can't really do that right now, but when the time is right and, and hospitals and nursing homes are, are open again, visit people in the hospital. Visit those who are in nursing homes or, or, or long-term care. How about number 20, inquire about the needs of those who are living alone. Send cards and letters to those who have been away from church, missionaries, those who have been ill. Volunteer to help one of our deacons with their work. Volunteer to set up a room for events that are upcoming. Volunteer to help operate the audiovisual system. Ask someone what you can do and do it. You know, I think it would be really neat. Maybe I should add this to it. I don't have a pen. Yeah, there's a pen right here. I'm going to put number 26 on here, and I'm going to add this to it. Uh, show up at one of the uh, recovery group meetings and bring a plate of cookies. You know, come and, and, and let people know that are, that are dealing with those things, that, that they are loved and supported. And lastly, and it's not a numbered one, practice hospitality. Uh, we can learn to be uh, hospitable, uh, not just in our homes, but everywhere we go. And I'm convinced that the more involved and invested we are in our church, the more we will make, the more we will work to make its ministry a success in our community. I want to read from the book, I Will. Just a, little short, just a few little short, short paragraphs. Some of them are only a sentence long uh, from the book, I Will. Tom Rainer wrote this, and it's under the heading, and it's time. It is time. There has been a slow but discernible change in many of our churches. We have retreated into a self-serving shell and have made church mostly about us. It is time for a change. You have to understand uh, the perspective that, that Tom Rayner uh, writes from, and so you'll understand this next sentence, uh, but there's still an application for us. He says, it is time for a change that won't come from a denominational bureaucracy or a plug and play program. I remember, um, and this is an aside, not in the book. I remember uh, for years, uh, I took the opportunity to, to go uh, to Tulsa, Oklahoma for the international uh, soul winning workshop. I know uh, Bill Russell's watching and I know he's been there a, a number of times as well. Over the past few years, uh, I've had an opportunity uh, two or three times now uh, to, to go out to Pepperdine University for their uh, thing called Harbor uh, in May. And, and get to listen to and be a part of a program of all these different uh, lessons and all these different things. And, and I can remember time after time going to, to these great workshops and, and, and conferences and, and filling a notebook full of, of ideas that, that I could go and do back home. Uh, you know, a plug and play program. If we'll just do this, this, and this, people will flock to our doors. Well, the reality is um, that's not always going to fix things. In fact, that, you know, doing something that's not even natural for us um, may not work very well at all. And so he says it's time. Time for a change that won't come from a denominational bu bureaucracy or a plug and play program. It's time for church members to stop nitpicking the small issues in the church and to discover the needs and hurts where we can serve. It is time for a change among church members around the world to seek to serve rather than seek to be served. It will be 
a revolution. Will you join it? If so, consider this commitment prayerfully and with total sincerity. I will serve. You know, it's sometimes awkward speaking into a camera and I'm struggling with dry mouth and, and trying to keep my notes organized in a way that I can uh, more readily talk and teach. Sometimes it doesn't come across. Uh, you may not get everything I want you to get uh, simply because of the format in which we have to offer it. But I am convinced that it's time for church members here to make the commitment to serve. Uh, there have been a few times in my life when I've worked someplace and I had the opportunity to, um, to make, to teach a, a new member class. Uh, and, and that new member class was always very important. We talked about uh, faith traditions. We talked about uh, the way we've done, the way we normally do things. We've talked about organizational, uh, the way we are organized. We've talked about elders and deacons and ministers, and we maybe we brought them in for the for the newcomers to meet them and 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 begin to build a relationship with them. But one of the things that that um, we needed to talk more about was the expectations of being a member of the Lord's Church. And I believe with all of my heart that when I was baptized into Christ, when I rose to live a new life, when all my sins were washed away, when I became a brand new child of God, when I was added to the kingdom, when I was added to the church, when I became a part of a local body of believers, there was an expectation built into my Christianity that I would serve others. And so I'd like to encourage you tonight as we bring this to a close that you join me in making a brand new commitment to serve the body of Jesus in this place. And that together as we serve and work out our own our salvation, uh, we will branch out into our community with the help and the hope and the message of good news. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we're grateful for all your service, grateful for all that you do in our lives, for all the blessings we've been given. Lord, sometimes it's really easy to take for granted the people around us to take you for granted. You're always going to be there. Things are always going to work out right, and you're always going to be our God. Lord, it's really easy sometimes for some of us, at least me, to get complacent and, and to forget that that I have a job to do, that each of us as your children have a job to do. We are to serve each other, to serve others, and in so doing, we will be serving you. Forgive us and bless us. Help us to make the commitment to serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So my last words before I say uh, good night and, and we hope to see you soon is I will serve. How about you? I hope you have a good evening. I hope something has been said that's been beneficial. I'll tidy up uh, this, this list that I shared and, and send it out. And uh, you feel free to draw a line through it, say, I'm not doing that, but add something else that you will. Uh, you feel free to modify this thing. Send it back to me. Let's get a, a body of believers here who are more active in serving than, than anything else and watch this church grow and explode and share Jesus all over. Uh, I'm excited about the future and I hope you will be too. It's a future. Uh, Y'all remember that old song, uh, Corey Ham, not Corey, somebody saying, my future's so bright, uh, I got to wear shades. Well, I believe that with, with God behind us and all of us joining hands and, and working together, our future is so very bright. Bless us. Uh, may you be blessed. May God bless each of us and uh, have a good night. And um, I'm really excited about preaching. I've had two weeks without preaching and 
Uh, I'm, I'm excited to be in the pulpit Sunday. Um, we'll be talking uh, a crazy sermon title, Who Knows Richie Rich? Uh, that might show my age, at least from mentioning that cartoon character. Uh, but I'm looking forward to Sunday and looking forward to see you. Have a good night. Have a blessed week. Find somebody to serve. Talk to you soon. <laughs>